<laughs> Hi guys. So, today's video, we're going to be talking about, we're going to be reading a creepy story from Reddit. As you can see from the title, Scary Reddit Stories, Part 1. In this series on my channel, I'm going to be reading some creepy stories from Reddit. However, they're pretty long. Each one is like 20 minutes long, so really, um, I'm only going to be doing one story video, but each time will be creepy nonetheless. But, uh, as you can, hold on, sorry. If you like this video, remember to like and subscribe to channel, my channel, follow me and everything, hit that notification bell. So you know my side of many videos, and let's get to today's video. It turns out, the scratches didn't come from a bear. My wife Steph and I have been together for about two years now. We met in co at college and hit it off right away. Stephanie was an orphan. When she was very young, she'd been raised by her grandfather until she went off to school and I met and met me. I didn't know much about her grandfather other than that he was extremely protective of her, almost verging on paranoia. Still, he passed away from uh, before I got a chance to meet him, so I really I really never gave him much thought over then to comfort stuff. That was until I found out that he owned something like 900 acres of forest. Stephanie was the only living descendant, so she was given the deed and the key ring. Pertaining to, uh, pertaining to a house that she'd never seen before. What a 23-year-old girl was going to do with all that, I don't know. All I know is that when she told me about her new land, I knew we had to go check it out. As we drove up and I asked her if she's been to this house in the forest before, she said, listen, I didn't even know this land existed. I have no idea why my grandpa would keep it from me. I was pretty clear that she was still taking his death pretty hard. No, no wonder really he basically raised her of her all her whole life. And I drive up to the mountains from our college, took a couple hours, and the forest was thick with pine and oak trees, growing close to the road. The further we got from civilization, the worse roads the roads got. Potholes, broken branches, and even grass had begun to spread out in some places. Our plan was to stay the night at the house. But if that didn't pan out, we'd, go, we'd buy a tent as well. Our GPS had turned off on a gravel road. This road was twisted around some rocky outcroppings. It was cl pretty clear that it was landing us down into the valley. After, after half an hour or so on this new road, we saw the house out in front of us. The house was clearly been abandoned for a couple decades. I thought I bought my camera with us, so I took a few pictures of us right away. As we stepped out of the car, Stephanie was pretty clear disappointed. Guess I, well I guess it was too much to hope someone would be caring for it all this time. Stretching my legs after that long car ride, was really nice. Stephanie walked up to the house to check it out. I warned her that the ground might be a little rotted out and to be careful. I started walking around the house and took some other pictures. I'll link it here, which I will look at the, video, the pictures in a minute. I came back to the house and walked in the front door. It was a mess. All rotten wood, dirt, I was honestly surprised it was still standing at all. I snuck, I shook my head and snuck back outside. And my eye caught on something. There was a tree just right 
of the house. I saw four long deep claw marks in it. A few months a few a few months old at least. I raised my camera and took a picture. That was when I heard Stephanie shriek. I ran back around to the front of the house and saw her standing in front of a, something rotten. When I looked closer, I saw it. It was a rotting deer carcass. Stephanie told me that we're most likely definitely a bear country. I took a picture of the deer. Only thing was it looked like the deer had been cut open with a branch of uh, razor blades. Bears don't normally do that. I'll link the picture here. Warning, this picture is of a rotten deer body. Yeah, we know. Uh, the rotting deer body I will not post on my channel because of YouTube's uh, policy and guidelines. So that's the, you know. As soon as we set out, the sun was setting soon. The sun soon set after that. We took out uh, tents inside the house and found a nice flat spot to set it. I busted out my glass grill and we made a couple hamburgers. Oh, that sounds good right now. We were sitting on our camp chairs inside the house and I'm feeling pretty good. By the time it got completely dark, Stephanie was looking at me pretty amazed. I asked her why was she so surprised. It's just, I've never been camping before. It's different than I imagined. She looked down at her phone, less cell service at least. I decided to ask more about Stephanie's grandpa. Why do you think he never told you about any of this? And why didn't he ever take you camping, I asked. I don't know. I went on for a while about how cool I thought the property was, plans for future parties with friends and bonfires, all that. Clouds had rotted in it, rolled in. So all the light was from our little lantern. I bought pretty soon. We headed inside the tent, zipped up the door, and got ready for bed. Stephanie had already fallen asleep when it happened. All the sounds from outside, all the crickets, birds, owls, all stopped. In an instant, laying in a sleeping bag inside the tent was slight deafening. That was when I heard it. A distinct clicking noise echoed out from the forest. I lay in silence trying to guess what kind of animal it might have been uh, that made that sound. It was so loud, Stephanie actually woke up next to me, asked what was that. I told her I didn't know. I heard the clicking noise again, extremely close. So it seemed like it might be right next to the house. I slipped out my sleeping bag, still inside the tent. I grabbed my camera, walked up the, uh, to the tent door, unzipped it down, unzipped it, and quickly I could... Then, I snuck out the camera, and in the darkness, I took a picture. In the flash, I saw a hand reaching through the broken window of the house. I almost looked human, but it was deathly white. It had long claws extending from each finger. Through the window, I saw what looked like a human silhouette with two bright yellow eyes staring down at us. I can't be sure, but it looked like there were blood sounds coming out of its mouth. I pulled the camera back and zipped up the door, closed. Steph sat up. What it is? What is it? She asked. I moved next to her, covered her mouth with my hand. My heart was racing, and I felt the hairs on my body stand up. I had no idea what was ha supposed to do. Silence. For a long moment, I heard nothing. 
Then, the clicking sound echoed out from where I knew the front door of the house was. Stephanie started, stared at me, her eyes clearly confused and afraid. She put her hand on mine, and I tried to pull her away, but I shook my head, and it didn't come off. S silence again. I strained to hear, but nothing. For what must have been two minutes, I sat with my hand on Stephanie's mouth. And then I heard the clicking from just a few feet outside of our tent. I had no idea how it got so close without making a sound. I froze in the moment. Then, as quietly as I could, I reached into my pants, laying on the ground, and pulled out my car keys. I hit the unlock button twice, and my car beeped loudly from where we parked it in front of the house. Silence again. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, I heard the clicking from out where my car was parked in front of the house. The car echoed a few moments time, a few more times, but each one was further and further away. After half an hour or so, the cricket started back up again. The forest was alive again. Stephanie stared at me. What did you see? I told her to get dressed and to be ready to run. We got dressed in the tent and I opened up the door. We ran to where my car was, jumped in, and sped away. I, d I didn't stop until we reached home. Next morning, I went out to my car and saw this on the hood. Has anyone had any experiences like this? I'll update the story if anything happens. So, what did you guys think about this story? Let me know in the comments and I will continue making these videos. This is a creepy story. I will try my best to put these pictures on there because I'm going to try my best to. So please let me know. Please like and subscribe to this channel. Follow me and everything. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on my videos. Uh, I'm going to try wearing my makeup soon. I just haven't in a while because I don't have enough money to keep buying makeup. So I'm trying to make it last. But uh, yeah, like, subscribe, follow me and everything, hit that notification bell, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.